Okay, today's day eight of my juice fast, and um, just like to start out by saying that in the past couple days, I've been listening to a really good book called 438 Days, and it's about a fisherman who was lost at sea and survived on a relatively small boat. They said it was eight steps long, you know, when he, he try to get some exercise on the boat and it said he had eight strides before he had to turn back. So a small boat and he survived for over a year. And um, the way he did it was by uh, surviving on fish, birds, turtles, uh, you know, I guess seaweed. <laughs> and um, he was a very, um, he was used to eating raw fish, you know, just raw food, because <laughs> he sort of lived that very primitive lifestyle. He was from El Salvador, but he was a fisherman in Mexico. He had the skills to do this. He was a great hunter. He had virtually nothing on the boat because it was sort of wrecked in a storm. And, um, it's a very interesting book. I, I would highly recommend it. But the reason I bring it up is because there are actually two people on the boat to start with. And um, both of them lived with practically nothing. They, um, they had, sometimes they had no water. And everything that they drank or ate they had to capture, you know, either in a plastic bottle, which they got plastic bottles from floating by the boat. And um, at one point they were so thirsty in the sun that they were literally licking the side of the boat for moisture, the entire boat. And so at the same time that I'm reading this incredibly inspirational book, I'm going on, I'm doing a juice fast, which basically it's like I'm in luxury land, you know, it's like I can have pineapple orange juice, I can have tomato juice, I can have watermelon juice. Um, one of the things that the guy craved were tortillas because he, he that's what he was used to eating and he would talk about the chopped tomatoes, cilantro, and I love Mexican food. In fact, I make a lot of it when I'm eating on the starch solution. You know, I do that version. Um, but I can't eat that today. But in a couple of days, I'll be able to eat that. And the reality is for 438 days, this guy could never have a, a um, tortilla. And he craved them so, so much. But he couldn't have them. He couldn't even get off the boat. And it, listening to this story of, you know, the predicament that this fellow was in, it put what I was going through in total perspective. Um, so let me just say that. Well, today in terms of juice, I, I drank, I had a lot of stuff left over from yesterday, kale, carrot, uh, watermelon combination, had tomatoes, so I was kind of sipping on this and that. At one point I had broth again, so it's the third day in a row I've had broth. Um, and I also was taking like little, in the afternoon I was, you know, kind of working and I just, I didn't want any more juice. So I had one teaspoon of peanut butter and that really set me up. That really set me up. And then I really wanted to go out and get a, before I had the peanut butter, I really wanted to go out and get a cup of chai, but I had no time to do that. So I I was going to make like a coffee beverage, like a Cafix beverage with uh, dehydrated milk, dried milk, but um, the, the Cafix was too old. I had to throw it out. So what I ended up having was a strong cup of black tea with Swerve, which is a, you know, xylitol sweetener, and uh, I put a little powdered milk in it. It tasted really good. It tasted sort of like chai. It was, it was very satisfying. 
And then what else other flavor did I taste? Oh yeah, I had a kale chip because I made kale chips last night. I'm, I made them again because, you know, I have to continue processing stuff from my garden and the kale's ready to be something done with it. So kale chips was the, um, the juicing kale really didn't work very well. My juicer doesn't juice kale very well. And I, I think I end up wasting a lot of it. So um, I did get some kale juice, which is good. But um, I decided just to make chips out of it. So that's pretty much processed. I still have more to do. But um, I had a couple little kale chips. So I did like have little flavor cheats today. And that's where I'm at on day eight. You know, it's like, that's what I did. I also made homemade sriracha, sir, sir, sriracha a hot sauce, because it's time to make that. You know, we cult, we uh, harvested the hot peppers, jalapenos, and the habaneros. And um, I had just a little taste of that. Boy, was that hot. <laughs> I certainly couldn't, you know, um, indulge myself with that too much. So um, anyway, I did okay. And I, I did my yoga. I did my resistance training. I did my treadmill. I couldn't get in the sauna or the whirlpool because it was closed because the lifeguard called in sick. And um, so that's it. It's day eight. It's like I'm getting kind of tired of this, you know, but, you know, have a goal. There's a reason for the goal. And... Um, so I'm just going to keep going on day nine and day 10. I'm not doing it perfectly. I generally never do it perfectly. In the beginning, years and years ago, I used to do it perfectly because I thought, oh, if I screw up one little bit, I won't get results. And now I know if you just take a little taste of like, I had a little taste of strawberry jam, just, just a taste of what it tastes like. It's not going to ruin things. I, I mean, you know, don't want to throw anybody off course, but that's sort of just the way it works that I've found. So I wake up, what was I? It was 123.8, which is, you know, really good. You know, I'm really in the zone. I'm so glad I did it. If I, if I hadn't gone on this by now, I'd probably be 133. So it's probably a 10 pound difference in eight days. In eight days, I either would have gone up two pounds I mean, this is, I've gone down, I started out at 130, so I've gone down like six pounds. But I wasn't really 130, I was like 128, so I've gone down like four pounds. But that's good. It's not easy to lose four pounds in eight days. So that's my day eight wrap up.